Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers again with Green Acres Pest Control. Sorry I hadn't been uh, making very many videos lately. I've been really, really busy. I took some time off with family, went out of town for a little bit, and uh, once I got back in town, of course, the phone rang off the hook. I had a lot of calls I had to return, and I just haven't had a lot of time to make a YouTube video. But today, <clears throat> I want to go over the new book I wrote. Now, I'm not trying to force anybody to buy anything because all the information in my book you can get from my YouTube channel or my website, uh, which is greenacrespc.com. All the links are below. Um, <clears throat> it's mostly just a guide on how to eliminate cockroaches, fleas, and bed bugs. Those are the only three right now. I'm working on a second volume. I'm going to include things like rodents and stuff like that in. But I want to read some of my book today because I think it's something that you need. It's really concise. Uh, I want to go over cockroaches. And I'm going to do a video series on this book so you can just watch through the playlist if you want to understand what's in the book and you don't want to buy the book because I'm trying to give you this information so you don't actually have to uh, go through any kind of uh, you know, PayPal or uh, credit cards or, you know, worry about Amazon or Kindle because it is a Kindle book. Now, you can buy a paper copy that, that Amazon does allow for the sale of paper copies. It's more expensive because there's, I mean, there's paper and binding and all that involved. But I, uh, like I said, <laughs> if you watch this series, then you'll get the book for free anyway. So you don't have to actually go out and buy it. But um, first, I want to go over some safety stuff that's in the book. Um, you know, basically, everything I tell you, I'm going to give you chemicals. Of course, all the links are below. Everything I do, I tell people exactly what I use. I tell people exactly how I do everything. And I don't mind telling you the secrets of the pest control industry. But I want you to understand that everything you do, you take your life in your own hands. Now, what do I mean by that? All right, when it comes to pesticide labels, you need to follow your label. It is very important to follow your label every single time, no matter what the label says. I had a lady that contacted me the other day, said she was mixing Crossfire two ounces to a gallon. You can't do that. You have to do the full recommended dose on the label. It's 13 ounces per gallon of water. That's how it works. That's what the manufacturer said that works. That's what they've tested that works. It works that way, and it's going to be the safest for you if you follow your labels. If your label says to wear gloves, wear gloves. If your label says to wear long pants and a long shirt, wear a long sleeve shirt, wear long pants, wear coats, wear respirators, wear whatever you need to ensure that you are safe when applying a pesticide. Pesticides are poison. They're designed to kill things. We don't want those things to be you or your children or your pets, okay? So when dealing with things like cockroaches, fleas, and bed bugs, most of these things, the reason that you're dealing with them is because they're inside your house. And you want to try to eliminate these problems in your home. And you're going to be using uh, insecticides or dusts or things like that inside your home. So you want to make sure you're safe. You want to make sure that you're not going to have an unnecessary contact with these pesticides. And if you do, be sure to follow the label, do whatever it says. If it says to get in the shower, wash off, wash your clothes, you know, whatever, do what the label says. So I got that out of the way. That's in the whole front of my book. I've got these several paragraphs that are dedicated to, uh, proper protective equipment, the, uh, all the stuff you're supposed to wear and how you need to abide by the label. One thing about the label is the label is the law, all right? If you break the label, you could be punishable by law. You know, if you end up getting sued or uh, you have to go to the hospital, you know, you're going to have to pay for all that out of pocket. And even if you're not sick, even if you're perfectly fine after everything is said and done, you could end up with uh, litigation issues, and you don't want that either. Um, so anyway, um, cockroaches. This is chapter one. All right, we're going to talk about cockroach control. Now, I'm only going to let these videos roll to about, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12 minutes or something, maybe 15 if, if it goes that far and I don't have much left to read. But <coughs> it's not a lot to read. It's only maybe 45, 50-page book. It's not a very long book. It's got a long, uh, very detailed glossary in the end of the book 
with links and information. I always recommend buying a, um, if you're going to buy the book, to buy the, um, the PDF copy, or not PDF, but the whatever it is, the Kindle book, because there are links there that provide detailed information to the products that I use. There are uh, images in the book that link to, you know, different insects, what they look like. Now, I don't have pictures of everything. These are all pictures I have taken myself. All of these illustrations I've done myself. Um, so I don't have pictures of every single insect or bug, but you can do simple Google search to find some of these pictures. Um, I will update the book as I develop more pictures. I will add more pictures to the book and uh, include that. Of course, people who have already downloaded the book can get that copy for free. But... Um, but anyway, I just want to make sure you know there are links in the book that are very valuable, and I want to make sure that you understand that that, that is there. So if you do get the book, you'll have the links, but I will provide most of the links in the product uh, in the description below if you want to check that out too. And I'll try to think about it. If I do think about it, I'll do a pinned comment at the very top. It'd be real easy to find. You don't have to go through all uh, the description. But anyway, the following are steps to eliminate cockroaches. This is how to, you know, it may be a little long because there are several different species of cockroaches we're talking about here. Um, I'm going to skip ahead. I'm going to go straight to German cockroaches because that's what most people ask me about. Uh, these are the, t the several different types of uh, roaches that we have in Virginia. We have German roach, Oriental roach, Pennsylvania wood roach, and a brown banded roach, also an American roach. Those are the five, the five breeds of cockroach in Virginia. But the one that most people want to know about is German cockroach. Now, why do I include all these different types of cockroaches in my book? Because in or the step, the first step to eliminating cockroaches is to know what type of cockroach you're dealing with. You know, not every cockroach is the same. Uh, although most people do have problems with things like German roaches and brown banded roaches because they develop a chemical immunity really, really quickly. Um, people do get, you know, wood roaches. They get American cockroaches. Uh, they get Pennsylvania, uh, Pennsylvania wood roach, American co cockroach. I just lost my page. Okay, there we go. Um, but, you know, there are other roaches that you can get other than just German cockroaches, which what everybody hears about getting in their apartment. Uh, water bugs. All right, people call them water bugs, but they're actually cockroach, unless it's a true water bug. There is such thing as a true water bug, and it looks like a creature from the deep. But um, oriental cockroaches, people call water bugs. They come out of the drains. Um, this is something that people do get. It, it, it is a pretty germ-infested cockroach. You don't really want them in your home, but they're usually pretty easy to eliminate. So I'm going to skip right ahead, and I'm going to go straight to German cockroaches because I don't want the video to go too long. Um, but anyway... In order to deal with German cockroaches, one, this is the, with any pest control application. You want to remove all people and pets from inside the house. You want to cover any fish tanks. If you have fish tanks because any particulate that might make it into the water, if you spray above head or you dust, you don't want any of that to get into a fish tank. You want to turn off all bubblers, things like that uh, for, you know, the extended like maybe two, three hours, whatever, how long it ever tells you on the label to stay out of the home. Um, that's how long you need to make sure that your fish are protected because you don't want to, to hurt any fish, aquatic life, things like uh, turtles and stuff like that. Now, I, in the book, I only I only say, you know, fish tanks because typically turtles live in a fish tank. But anyway, you want to do a basic crack and crevice application. Now, what is a crack and crevice application? That's like I said, I go over all this in the glossary, but what a crack and crevice application is when you treat inside the cracks and the crevices in your home. Uh, basically like where your countertop meets the wall, um, underneath your sink, if there's any cracks around where your cabinets are jointed together, um, places like that's what, that's what you call a crack and crevice treatment. Now, German roaches require the most extensive crack and crevice treatment known. It is very extensive. Um, and the reason you have to do this, and this is a, a lesson that I was taught by my father, is that as long as there is a chemical residue in the crack, in the crevice, roaches can't live there. If there is not a residue in those cracks, in those crevices, roaches will live there. So if you're a professional, and this book is professionals too, not just a do-it-yourselfer, but this works for professionals too. This is stuff I've done since I was six years old. I'm second generation pest control technician. Um, is it, it explains 
places that you can actually treat to be successful in eliminating cockroaches um, with the least amount of time as possible. So if you've got a customer and you're going on a monthly pest control basis and they're wanting you to get rid of their cockroaches pretty quickly to save money or uh, save time or they just want the, don't want the roaches there anymore, um, this book actually, <coughs> excuse me, this book actually tries to get rid of the, you tries to teach you how to get rid of roaches as fast as possible so you're not having to deal with roaches you know six seven eight months in the future you can get rid of them immediately so you need to make sure you treat as many cracks and crevices as you can okay so a basic crack and crevice application of your pesticide is advised for the elimination of german roaches only with this breed a very thorough application is needed in order to achieve this this one must, this, mu one must remove, I cannot read, and I wrote this. <laughs> one must remove all belongings from inside the kitchen and the bathroom cabinets. This will allow one to be able to treat under the sink basin, in the cracks that form where the cabinets are screwed together, nailed or glued together. I always say, if I miss a crack next month, roaches will be there. Uh, remember, German roaches love water, places that they find water. If you have roaches living on your bedside table, check for constant water source like a drinking glass at night and eliminate that. Take that away. Don't, don't be drinking water or use a water bottle that can screw it. Um, and, and treat the nightstand. You know, take the drawers out of the nightstand. You know, take everything out and treat inside the nightstand. Make it as in, inhospitable as you possibly can for the roaches to live there. Uh, do not place items back in the cabinets, okay, after until after the pesticides are completely dry, read your label. They'll tell you this on the label. Uh, the pesticide label will explain how long people and possessions need to be away from treated surfaces. Retreat once, monthly, or more often, if the pesticide label advises or allows you to, for at least six months straight. I advise, uh, as treatments must be done for three months after you see the last cockroach to ensure all the eggs have hatched and nymphs are eliminated. Now, most German cockroach eggs will hatch within 28 days, but there are instances where the eggs will last two, maybe three months. And so that's why I said you want to go six months. Typically, three months is, is really long to get rid of German roaches nowadays. It used to, back when I was young, it would take you anywhere from six months to a year to eliminate cockroaches, but you can eliminate them sooner. But what I always tell people is to treat for three months after you see the last roach. This will ensure that all the eggs that have to hatch have hatched and the babies have died. Because I have sometimes gone into homes and done homes and thought I eliminated the problem and two months later eggs hatch and the babies are everywhere and the people will call you and they'll say, hey, I got babies all over the house. I don't know where they came from, but it's just babies. There's no adults or anything. It means all the eggs have hatched all at once. So, uh, only re-enter the home when the label instructs you to. So basically, after the chemical is dried is typically what the label will say. Um, remove, uh, and that's, that's for German cockroaches. Now, you'll also want to do baiting. Now, I've got other options here. It says, if you scroll down, now I've got brown banded is the next one that I have listed. But to also, for pesticide options for roaches, I have this. This is, this is my, um, every chapter I've written, I give... A little bit of a uh, at the very end of every chapter <coughs> I give information on different ways you can eliminate German cockroaches oriental roaches American roaches whatever and I talk about bait all right bait gel baits are advised for German and brown banded roach infestations only use baits in cabinet cracks or around sink basins be very careful not to spray these baits with any pesticide would you want bug spray on your food. If you treat baits with pesticides, roaches will not eat them. A good gel bait is Advion gel bait. And like I said, I've got this right here in the book uh, for roach control. Always purchase your baits in an online store. Try to purchase a gel bait that is not sold to the general public, like from Walmart or Dollar General. You want to buy them from on the internet because people don't all have access to the internet, even in today's world. Uh, and they may not have access to credit cards or something like that. And so you want to try to use pesticides that others aren't using. So, <clears throat> and I'm sorry, this video is going to go a little long because I explained a whole lot at the beginning of the video that I won't have to explain in future videos. But um, I go over sprays. Um, Alpine WSG is usually what I recommend for the treatment of all 
roaches. It works well indoors, outdoors, and it will control roaches listed in this book. Uh, foggers. I never, ever recommend the use of foggers, but I include it in the book because it is something that people do. Uh, foggers or bug bombs are never recommended for the treatment of any type of roach. Do not buy them as they are a waste of money and get pesticides on everything you own. All right, so a fogger, when you set off a fogger, it's like a little ball or like a little canister. It's about that long, like a hairspray bottle. And you push the button down and the spray goes and it gets on everything. It would get on my bed, it would get on the walls, it gets on, it gets on literally every single surface in the house. And that's just not very effective for German cockroaches. Like I said, German roaches live in the cracks and the crevices. There's no reason to use a fogger. A lot of people still do fogging. I don't do it. No, really need to. You really don't need to. And there's no reason to cause you more contact spray than you really need to, you know, you don't want to, like I was saying at the very beginning of the video, you, you want to limit your exposure to pesticides as much as you can. That's why it's so important to read the label. So, uh, dusts. Dust is rarely recommended because Alpine WSG works so well. Now, I'm putting that in here because things may change. If roaches become immune to these pesticides that I've listed in the book, then hopefully I could do an updated video and explain to you what I'm using now. But right now, I'm using Alpine WSG. It works really well, and I, and I recommend boric acid dust uh, to, to eliminate roaches if you're going to use a dust. And that's in the wall. You take and you unscrew your uh, outlet covers and you dust around your outlets and stuff like that. Um, if, you, if, you, if, you can, if you could see the dust, you've used way too much dust. You should not be able to see it. You should be able to wipe your finger across it and find that that's the only way you can even see the dust is if you drag your finger across it like what collects on a TV screen. Um, granules, all right. Granules are advised for outdoor use. Okay, so most of the time when you get a granular insecticide, granules are something that you will get from, say, Home Depot, Walmart, Southern States, somewhere like that. And what granules do is they absorb in around the surface of the ground. So you, you, you spread them on the, the soil uh, right next to the house or, or in the yard. And what that does is it eliminates the ability for the roaches to crawl over the granules. So if you live in a city community type area where your houses are really packed really close together. You can granulate between the homes. If you know one of your neighbors might have roaches and you're worried they're going to travel in the summer or something to your house, then you can treat the yard with granules and it gives a little bit of a barrier that they have to crawl over to get into your home. Now, granules only activate when they're wet. Then typically the label will say to water your lawn after you use your granules. So they're only going to last so long. So granules are something that you will need to reapply if you're worried about bugs coming in from outside. And they work for lots of things, not just roaches. They also work for, um, they work for, uh, let's see, roaches, spiders, ants, crickets, silverfish, you know, lots of things will be eliminated with granules. And I recommend them, uh, especially on my quarterly accounts. I always use granules because quarterly is only once every three months. And, you know, bugs are a problem more often than three months. And so I try to use something like that that's going to treat the ground. Um, so that's all that I've really got a lot to, to go over. There's a lot more in this chapter if you're really interested on other types of cockroaches, oriental cockroaches or water bugs. Um, you know, if you're really interested, then, then I will leave a link below where you could check out this book. I do run promotions uh, on my last book about just bed bugs. I, uh, I actually gave it away for free for several weeks on Amazon just to try to help people out. I get a lot of messages on my Facebook page. Also, I, um, you know, if you like the video, think about giving me a thumbs up. If you really like it, consider subscribing to my channel and uh, stay tuned. I'm going to go over fleas and bed bugs coming up. Y'all have a real great day. I appreciate it. Thank you.